Hello kids! For today's video, we are going to practice the topic of the weeks and finish the book pages. But before that, we're going to listen to a very small dialogue uh, with some of the phrases that we have practiced before. You ready? Now, listen and read. I'm seeing a movie on Tuesday afternoon. What about you? I'm seeing my teacher on Tuesday afternoon at 3.30. How come? I forgot my homework. All right. Okay, Mr. Monkey. So tell me, Sonia and April are talking about the present or the future? The future. Very good. Excellent. They are talking about the future because they are using the present continuous and the going to to talk about the future. Let's take a look. Future with present continuous. You can use the present continuous to talk about future arrangements, future plans, especially when you mention a specific time or place. Let's see. Arrangement. We are meeting our friends at 2 on Friday. So we have specific details, 2 o'clock, right? And Friday. Remember, use will for future facts and predictions about things you believe will be true. Use going to for future plans and predictions about things you see. Let's see some examples for future facts. The moon will rise at 10 o'clock tonight. Prediction about belief. Things will never be the same again. Future plans. I'm going to take a music class next year. That's in the future and it's something that you're planning, right? Prediction about what you see. Look at those clouds. We are going to get wet. Okay, now to practice this, we are going to open our books in page 54. As you can see here, we have some examples of the future with present continuous. And we are going to practice with some predictions right here. Exercise B. Write the phrase that completes each sentence. Number one. She's going to buy a lot of English books for her, her class. Number two. The plane will land in Paris at 5.50. Number three. The moon will rise at 8 o'clock. 4. We are taking a vacation next week. Number 5. We are meeting for dinner on Tuesday. Number 6. He's going to start playing baseball with the other boys. And number 7. The test will be at tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Okay. okay, so remember you have to scratch each of the words that you that you use here to complete the sentence, all right? Excellent. Now let's go to page 55 and let's keep practicing. We're going to use going to and the present continuous. And it's scramble the sentences. So you have to organize. Tienes que organizar la frase. Tenemos que organizar la frase como va correctamente mirando la imagen también. All right, ready? Number one. I'm practicing at 4 o'clock. Practica conmigo la pronunciación, Mr. Monkey. ¿Listo? Y leamos las frases. Number 2. She's meeting them at the park tomorrow. Entonces, fíjate que aquí estamos usando el ING, pero las palabras de tiempo como o'clock, 4 o'clock, tomorrow, tonight, esas palabritas nos indican que estamos hablando del futuro y no del presente. All right? Number 3. We are not going to the movies tonight. We are not going to the movies tonight. ¿Cuál es la palabra de tiempo aquí? Tonight. The time word. Number four. Are they going on vacation next month? And the time word is next month. Very good. Number five. He's traveling to England next week. The time word is next week. And here we are talking about future plans. Estamos hablando de planes futuros, de arreglos de planes que vamos a hacer en el futuro. Y usamos las palabras de futuro con el ING y el verbo to be. All right, six. We are playing soccer on Saturday in the future. All right, excellent. Now for exercise D, 
You have to write some sentences about your plants. Okay, Mr. Monkey, you have to write some sentences. Mr. Monkey and I wrote this one. Vamos a compartir las dos que Mr. Monkey y yo hicimos y tú vas a completar las otras con tus propios planes usando going to y el present continuous. I'm doing my homework tomorrow. She's going to parties next month. All right. And you complete the rest. Excellent. Para nuestra siguiente actividad, vamos entonces a ir un momentico aquí a hablar sobre ciertos verbos y ciertas, eh, ciertas eh, acciones que hacemos usando. Ok. Esta palabrita mis que vemos acá, la vamos a usar para decir que algo estaba mal hecho. Te voy a poner un ejemplo. Let's read. Remember, a prefix, le llamamos prefix in English, is added to the beginning of the word. It changes the meaning of the word. The prefix mis means bad or wrong. Incorrect. Yes. Entonces, miramos aquí, behave, que significa comportamiento. Si le colocamos mis antes, nos queda misbehave y significa mal comportamiento. So was a good boy. He didn't misbehave. Ahora hagamos un ejercicio bien rápido. Listen and say the words. Write the words by adding miss. So let's listen to the audio. And we are going to... Page 63. Using Word this. study. Ready? D. Listen and say the words. Write the words by adding miss. One. Mistreat. Mistreat. Two. Mistrust. Mistrust. Three. Miscommunicate. Four. Misdirect. Five. Misread. Six. Misremember. Seven. Miscalculate. Eight. Misjudge. Excellent. Now let's see what this means. Mistreat, maltrato, right? Mistrust, mala confianza. Miscommunicate, mis communicate, mala comunicación. Misdirect, hice por donde no es, es una eh, mi, mal, mal dirección o cuando tú quieres ir a un lugar y te indican mal las direcciones, dices que eh, ocurrió un misdirect, ¿ya? Yes? Misread, mal leído. Misremember, mal recordado. Miscalculate, mal calculado. Y misjudge, mal juzgado. Es decir, que juzgaste mal a esa persona. Now, let's go to our workbook and let's complete some of those phrases too. here. We're going to complete and then you add mistrust and complete the word, yes? Mistrust, miscommunication, misdirect, misread, misremember. Miscalculate, misjudge. All right. When you finish completing the words, we are going to complete the sentences with the words, with the words from the box. All right. So let's see. That little girl. Let me open it here. So let's make it bigger. That little girl is not obedient. It's not obedient. She likes to misbehave. I hope she will learn to behave. I don't want to get the wrong information. I don't want to misunderstand. Let's make sure that we understand each other. We reported that man to the animal protection group because he mistreated those animals. They make sure people treat animals kindly. Number four. I'm sorry. I misread the note that you wrote. I thought it said to meet me at five o'clock. I read it again. I said eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock. Five. I got the wrong answer. I think I miscalculated when I added the numbers. I need to calculate them again. Often people judge other people by what they look like. That's an easy way to misjudge someone. All right. Perfect. Now let's continue. In this exercise, you are going to write the past tense of these words. 
So let's take a look. Dig, el pasado es dog y significa excavar. Draw, el pasado es drew y significa dibujar. Feel, el pasado tenemos felt y significa sentir. Feel, sintió. Sentir, sintió. Light, encender y el pasado lit. Become, convertirse y el pasado convirtió. Became. Think, pensar. Y el pasado, thought. Say, decir. Y el pasado, set. Make, hacer. Y el pasado, made. Write, escribir. Y el pasado lo decimos, wrote. Meet, conocer o encontrarse. Y el pasado, met. Sleep, dormir. Y el pasado decimos, slept. Get, conseguir. Y el pasado, got. O adquirir. Got. All right, very good. Now let's complete the sentences with these verbs in past. In my dream, I met the president. Number two. I felt sick yesterday, so I didn't come to school. Three. Sam drew a lot of pictures yesterday. Four. Angie lit the candles on the birth cake. Five. We dug a hole before we planted the tree. Very good. Now you are going to write a paragraph based on the model. Vas a mirar el párrafo que nos dan en pasado aquí y con esos verbos que acabamos de aprender, con esas acciones, guiándote, inspirándote en este, vas a escribir tu propio párrafo contándonos alguna historia en pasado usando esos verbos y el going to. All right. After you finish this, This is what we're going to do. All right, let me hear. Okay, now we're going to practice the essays. Remember that we have to write an essay for next week about the future. And finally, we're going to see the wrap-up video. Okay, so let's take a look at the video to remember why are wheels important. Ready, Mr. Monkey? Why are wheels important in our lives? And let's talk about the future. Hi there. Look at these gadgets. They all do very different things. But what do they all have in common? Well, None of them would work without one of our earliest and most important inventions, the wheel. So, today's big question is, why are wheels important? The wheel is one of the most important inventions in history. It was invented around 5,000 years ago, here in Sumer, part of modern Iraq. It changed transportation completely. Soon after the invention of the wheel, people began to build carts. People could get animals to pull these carts along, and it made it a lot easier to transport things. This invention was so useful that some people still use carts today. Most forms of transportation use wheels. These bikes have two main wheels with spokes and rims. Cars have wheels on the outside and on the inside. There are wheels in the engine to make it go. And there's a wheel for the driver to control the car too. It's called the steering wheel. Even airplanes have wheels. They allow the airplane to take off, land, and move around the runway. Wheels are things too. Can you think of any? This is a mill in England. These old mills are always beside a river or street. The water pushes a large wheel attached to the wall of the mill. 
This wheel turns a special grinding machine to make flour. Today, the mill makes paper and it uses electricity rather than water, but it still uses wheels to dry and stretch the paper. Lots of machines use wheels and wheel gears. This printing press, for example, needs wheels to print and turn the paper. We even use wheels for entertainment. This is the London Eye, large Ferris wheel in central London. People can get on this wheel, ride it to the top, and enjoy the breathtaking views of London. The wheel was an amazing development in technology. Without it, we wouldn't have bikes or cars, and many of the mechanical devices we rely on wouldn't work. The wheel is an ancient invention, but it's still important in our modern world. All right, guys, that video was really, really good, and it reminds us about the wheels and the importance of wheels. Okay, now, to keep practicing uh, the units before, we are going to make the review workshop in the next page. Just let's find it right here. In page 60, you can find the review workshop. Let's do it together. Number one, which reading tests have the most interesting information about wheels? Me vas a decir cuál de los testes que leímos tiene información importante, cuál te gustó más. Write two ways to the invention of the wheel can change people's life. En esta pregunta me vas a contar dos formas en la que la invención de la rueda cambió la vida de las personas. And number three, do you think transportation in the future wheels, in the future will have wheels? Why and why not? ¿Crees que el transporte en el futuro va a necesitar ruedas? Sí. ¿Y por qué? ¿Por qué sí o por qué no? All right. When you finish these questions, we are going to the exercise A. And we are going to unscramble the adjectives. Match each one to a definition. Number one is thrilling, which is very exciting. Number two, fragile, which means easy to break. Foolish, silly, determined, not giving up. This is the definitions. Courageous, very brave, daring, willing to do scary things. Risky, possibly dangerous, obedient, following directions. Okay, when you finish this exercise, we are going to write the missing letters to complete each phrase. In this case, is a mechanical invention, a gear of a clock, a grind with flour, modern technology, a car losing traction. A flower mill, a bicycle, a spoke, and to hold something. Excellent. Now in exercise C, we are going to talk about the picture and use as many words as we can from the word box. Here I give you some examples. We have the grandma is on the wheelchair. Yes. The boy or the man is on the bicycle. There is a spaceship in the sky. Here there is a spaceship in the sky. Y puedes seguir haciendo frases usando esas palabras y mirando la imagen, describiendo la imagen. Tú vas a hacer unas cuantas más. In exercise D, we're going to answer the questions. And this is about you. Esta la, va, la vas a contestar sobre ti. Yo escribí algunas ideas sobre eh, las respuestas a mis preguntas, pero tú vas a escribir tu propia información. What makes you feel fortunate? ¿Qué te hace sentir afortunado? What do you think is exciting? ¿Qué crees que es emocionante? What do you think is tedious? ¿Qué crees que es aburrido, tedioso? And what are you determined to do? ¿Y qué estás determinado en la vida a hacer? I am determined to learn another language, for example, French or German. And then you can write anything you want. Okay, after you finish, now let's go to the next exercise. And in this exercise, now I want you to take a look at the picture. What do you see in the image? What can you see, Mr. Monkey? I 
see penguins. I see a snow and ice. And they are colored black and white. Very good, Mr. Mon Mr. Monkey. Yes, we can see some animals. So let's talk about the big question in this unit. And the big question is, how do animals communicate? Let's take a look at the video and watch and listen. All right, wonderful. So how do animals communicate? They communicate in many, many ways. Let's take a look at the new vocabulary for this term. And we are going to listen and repeat the words and the sentences. Ready? Page 70, Unit 7. Get ready. Words. A. Listen and say the words. Then read and listen to the sentences. Race. Race. Drift. Drift. Glide. Glide. Wade. Wade. Paddle. Paddle. Dive. Dive. Splash. A splash. Propel. Propel. Float. Float. Sprint. A sprint. Jog. Jog. Plod. Plod. Okay, now let's see some examples. One. He raced to the park to play with his friends. Two. The clouds drift slowly across the sky. Three. The fish glides smoothly through the water. Four. The boy waded into the shallow water in the lake. Five. She paddled her rowboat down the river. Six. My sister can dive into the deep water, but I can't. Seven. The kids splashed water on each other. Eight. The whale uses its tail to propel itself through the water. Nine. He floated on his back in the pool. Ten. She sprinted to the finish line. Eleven. For exercise, Jen jogs every morning in the park. Twelve. The old horse plodded slowly down the road. Wonderful. Okay, now let's go to our book. And let's complete the exercises with the new words. These are actions that you can make. Okay, so in this page, page 62, how do animals communicate? You have to name three animals and the sounds they make. For example, what sounds the birds make? They tweet. You can write maybe dog, they wolf, or etc. You can name three. In the next question, what else do you know about these animals and how they communicate? They communicate through their bodies, through their sounds, yes? And what are three ways, three ways 
that humans communicate. So humans can communicate by speaking, with their body language, and by writing. Correct? Okay, very good. After you finish answering the three questions, we are going to look at the vocabulary. Look at the image and label. Number one, race. Number two, a splash. Number three, dive. Number four, jog. Number five, wait. Number six, paddle. Number seven, float. And number eight, drift. Very good. Now that we have finished with the vocabulary, we are going to circle the correct answer. Let's read. I can on my back in the water. I can what? Float, float, wait, or propel. Very good. It's float. The man was so tired, but he, ahead down the road, he what? He floated, drifted, waited. What do you think is the answer? The answer is floated. A fish can itself through the water with its tail. Wait, propel, drift, or jog. What do you think it is? Propel. Very good. The ice skater across the ice. Jog, plug, glided, or sprinted. What do you think the answer is? Excellent. Is C. Lit it across the ice. All right, number five. John likes a splash water on his brother in the swimming pool, jog, drift, or wait. A splash. Correct. When you, you enter the water head first. When you what? When you dive. Wonderful. Okay, let's continue. In exercise C, write the missing words. The girls jogged in the park every morning. Frances did not want to go in the deep water. She waited in the swallow water. It was a sunny day. Two clouds drifted across the sky. Jacob was walking in the park when a rabbit sprinted across the path. In the summer, I like to float on my back in the pool. We were late for the movie, so we raced to get our tickets. You need strong arms to paddle a, rim, a rowboat a long time. My younger brother thinks it's funny to drift water on me when he swims on the lane. All right, and finally, we are going to write three words that describe moving quickly and three that describe moving slowly. So which of these verbs you can move quickly? Yes, very good job. Trotar, sprint, yes, race, and dive. These are words that you can make quickly. What and faster? What about it slowly? Slowly we can say drift, float, or wait. You can make these actions slowly. All right, guys. So we have finished for today our video. This is for unit six and five. And we are going to continue practice during the classes. Say bye-bye, Mr. Bye-bye, kids.